Well, good morning, Crosspoint family. For those of you who are here with us and online and in person, we are glad that you have decided to join us this morning to worship our glorious Savior, Jesus Christ. As we do that, we come together with some sorrow in our hearts, however. This last week, one of the dear family members has gone to be with the Lord. Dale Hillsman passed away this last week. He was a, a dear member of the family, as I mentioned before. There is a funeral service planned for August 8th. Uh, there's a 1 p.m. visitation and a 2 p.m. service. So if you are able to be there and are comfortable attending, I know that that would be a great comfort to Eloise and the family. This morning, we have a guest speaker. Many of you will remember Mark Mendel from a few years back, who was our interim pastor. He's going to be here speaking for us this morning, and he's going to be preaching out of Psalm 119. Any trivia buffs out there? Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in Scripture. So he's not going to be going through it all, I hope. Not sure. He might be going through all 147 verses. We'll just have to see, and maybe we'll start throwing tomatoes at him. I don't know. But I would like to prepare us as we go into the rest of our worship this morning by reading a section of Psalm 119, starting with verse 89. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You have established the earth, and it stands fast. By your appointment, they stand this day, for all things are your servants. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, and by them you have given me life. I am yours. Save me, for I have sought your precepts. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for revealing your word to us, for giving us your word that has revealed who you are in your nature, in your character, in your personhood, in the work of Christ Jesus. Father, as we come before you this morning with hearts longing to know you more, to see you more fully, I pray that you would make yourself known to us this morning, that your spirit would be with us here in person and dispersed through the many homes and other places where we are gathered virtually this morning. Thank you for your goodness to us. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This time I would like to invite Eric Gronval up. He is one of our elders to give us an update on our finances as well as lead our offering. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. So, like, uh, like you said, I'm one of the elders here. Uh, just wanted to come to you guys with a little bit of information, not necessarily the most fun topic for everyone to talk through, but something that I think is important for the congregation to be aware of um, and something that we're kind of working through as elders and the finance team. So, it, last week we had Brandon come up and gave a little update on Board of Faith and all the great things that are happening from that perspective. But he did put a plug in at the end on, you know, that we're having a little bit tighter run on our finances. But as we were looking through them here, we wanted to give a, a little bit more in-depth update and a little bit of a call out to us as a congregation here just because of, of where we're sitting. So just, just uh, real quickly here, uh, over the last two months, actually, we've seen a drop in giving fairly significantly, about eight to $10,000 shorter than what we had been giving. Um, and that puts us in a situation where we're starting to now spend more on a monthly basis than what we are taking in. Uh, so that puts us in a concerning spot from, a, from an elder board and from a leadership committee um, as we're starting to look at where things are going into the future here. And so just wanted to uh, give you a little bit of an update on where we're at, uh, what we see, and a little bit of, of, uh, of information on how we're going to keep moving forward as a, as a leadership team here and a little bit of a call out to us as a congregation uh, to relook at things. Because I know 
like myself, I looked back at my finances and I was looking at the uh, the giving statements. I actually contacted Terry and he gave me a giving statement. I found out, oh, I missed a couple weeks in there because of all the strange things we've been doing here. So um, anyways, uh, through June, uh, we brought in about $260,000. We've spent though $278,000. In July, uh, looked to be about on the same track uh, as, as being behind what our expenses are. We need about $30,000 per month uh, to kind of run the operations of the building here. That covers you know, the mortgage, it covers the salaries, it covers the uh, electricity, all of the bills that we have, right? There's not a lot of fluff within that that we can cut and, uh, and go after from that perspective. So I do want to encourage us as we're looking at that, you know, it's a challenge that we have in front of us um, that we don't really have a lot of places we can cut effectively uh, to hold down expenses any more than what we have been doing. So um, we're going to keep watching this. Uh, we're going to keep watching our expenses. We're going to keep, uh, you know, holding down the expenses that we can uh, throughout the whole, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the things that we can go after from that perspective. Um, but, but really this change in giving has been a little concerning through the last couple of months. So. Uh, I'm, I'm up here as part of the elder board to, uh, to kind of put a call out to the team here, to the congregation, to the uh, members here to, you know, to kind of re-look at things. If you're able to give a little bit more, uh, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, as we said last time, we've had, it's actually been really encouraging because we haven't seen a drop off in our giving to Ford and Faith, which is quite encouraging in a lot of ways. Um, uh, and the commitments that people had made through the Ford and Faith campaign. Uh, so we are on track on the forward and face side of things, um, and that is over and above giving, but it, that's what it needs to be. It needs to be over and above our regular fund giving from that perspective. Um, and and I, I, I would also like to encourage the church here that, right, from last year to this year, right, if we look at the finances and how we've brought in uh, or been, been going after the forward and faith campaign, um, the giving in general is a little bit up year over year uh, from that perspective if you look at the Ford and Faith plus the benevolent and the and the uh, general fund giving. We're up a little bit year over year. Um, the real challenge is here is, is that the funds that we have for operation, which is, like I said, we need about $30,000 per month in this space, um, is, is, uh, is we're coming short on that on a monthly basis at this point from a giving standpoint. So. Really want to encourage you, uh, if you're losing track, or if you're, you're say, hey, I, you know, finances, it's been kind of crazy this last year here. We've been trying to figure things out. I'm sure Terry or, uh, or Melinda or the finance team would be love, would love to give you an update of to where you're at if you're saying, oh, I just can't remember where I'm at on things. I had them do that for me last week um, and found I had missed a couple weeks in, uh, in, in my giving. I thought I was on track, but I missed a couple. Um, so... I uh, really encourage you to kind of do that. I'd, I'd also encourage you to pray with us as elders as we're moving forward with, uh, you know, kind of next steps. Um, pray for the church. Pray that we get some additional funding coming back in, um, that we can cover our expenses from that perspective. Um, so with that, uh, this is our time of offering, and we have a lot of different ways that you can provide, uh, give to the church here. We've got, if you're here present in the building, there's a couple black boxes on the back wall uh, that, we're, that we're doing from a giving standpoint there. So you can drop your offering in there if you want to do that in that way. Uh, you're also welcome to uh, send things in directly to the church or we have the online um, uh, uh, giving form that you can get, fill out on the website uh, and have things done automatically from those perspectives. So I encourage you to take a, take a look at any of those methods um, and, uh, and I ask you to pray with me as we kind of put the finances of this church in front of the Lord. It's his house, it's his body, it's his money in the, at the end of the day, um, and, uh, and he will provide for us. We have faith as an elder committee, kitty, committee that he will provide, um, and he will, have, um, he, will, he will make provision for this church, and we'll be able to move forward from that perspective. So we have a lot of faith in that. We just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of the situation we're in from that perspective. So pray with me. Dear Father, we just we lift up our church to you. We ask as you, as we give back to uh, the ministry here at Cross Point, that uh, that you take that money and you move it forward, um, multiply it, um, encourage us with the way 
that it can cover the expenses in ways that we didn't realize it could. Thank you for uh, the faithfulness of our finance team that keeps track of all these things and gives us the great information that we can use uh, to be responsible and to be diligent with the money that we've been provided through this congregation. We thank you for the, the generosity of this congregation through the Ford and Faith campaign, through the general fund. And we just pray now for, uh, for continued generosity uh, and, uh, and faithfulness of this congregation. I thank you so much for this, this body. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, Cross Point Church. Um, thank you for inviting Karen and me back again. It's such a privilege to be a part of your congregation, even though it's a little bit intermittent from time to time, but um, anytime we can be with you, it just feels like home. You make us feel very uh, welcome, so uh, thank you. It's good to be here. Um, uh, I know this last year and in recent months, uh, as it was even mentioned uh, you have experienced uh, some hardships, some setbacks, some losses, some people and some families' losses, uh, health issues. I know there have been new births and great strides forward um, this last year. And so uh, Karen and I just rejoice with you and all that God's doing. And um, we'll continue to pray for your church, this church, and um, you. And uh, look forward to tracking and following with how uh, God leads into the future. Um, let me pray before we look at God's word. Father, thank you for the promises of your word and for the fact and the reality that you have revealed yourself to us. You've not kept yourself hidden or a secret, uh, but you have chosen in your love and in your grace to not only create us, but then disclose yourself to us so that we can know you. And we pray this morning that your word would speak to us. Um, in ways that would allow us to deepen our faith, uh, broaden our faith, grow in your word, and um, leave this place today and at home, uh, be challenged and encouraged by you to listen to your voice every day. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Well, this morning, as um, Sean uh, mentioned, I've selected Psalm 119. And the biggest chapter in the Bible, obviously the longest psalm in the Psalms. And uh, if you're a marathon runner, if you're a runner, this is the marathon chapter of the Bible. Um, if, you're, if you like military, this is like an aircraft carrier of uh, scripture. Uh, so think of your own image. This is a, a monster passage. And we're not going to go through every verse, obviously. Uh, but I have... Uh, noticed a number of uh, lessons, I think, for us, four things that I think we can uh, take away from this uh, psalm. This winter, I was um, kind of turning point, not just New Year's, but a number of things happening, and um, I was just feeling led and prompted by God to think about where I was reading in Scripture, what I was studying, and uh, I got led to Psalm 119 because it's a passage I like. I felt like there was an area in my life in terms of scripture reading that maybe had gotten a little soft or sloppy. And so I felt led to uh, do some study this winter and into this spring. And then Mike asked me to share um, this Sunday. And I know he's been leading you through a series on the Ten Commandments. And so I felt this was appropriate because Psalm 119 kind of hammers away at all the different ways that we can think about God's word, his law, uh, his commandments, and um, I hope this morning that this uh, dovetails with what Mike has uh, been uh, sharing with you as well. Um, so to, this morning what we're going to do, 176 verses, that's a lot. And so I remember one time flying to California, flew over the American Rockies, and I remember that was my first time to see the whole Rocky Mountain Range. And uh, if you're down at the base of a mountain, obviously there's trails and handles on the, on the uh, rock uh, formations where you can climb and you can walk the trails. And that's a whole different vision or picture of a mountain, right? But we're going to do a flyover this morning for 30 minutes or so. And um, we're going to look at some of the um, kind of major formations that make up 
uh, the range of this uh, psalm, Psalm 119. Uh, this spring, Karen and I actually went to Florida of all places. We got back a couple weeks ago because our kids are there and they needed us because they're moving. And uh, well, we were at a church there visiting with my son and the pastor um, made a comment about the whole pandemic and all of us have been impacted by that in some way, in some form or fashion. Um, someone, uh, I think I, there was a quote in the paper about uh, the pandemic that we're all in the same boat, but we're all in different kinds of boats. And uh, this pastor was um, trying to make a point of how do we respond and react to the new world that we live in. And he made kind of an extreme statement that I didn't really totally agree with. He said, quit watching the news. No matter what news you watch, quit watching the news. And maybe there are people in his church that are kind of overboard on uh, being immersed in whatever favorite news programs and channels and resources they, uh, they follow. And I think that's true if it uh, eclipses our time in the Word, which he said, um, lay off the news and get into God's Word and let God's Word speak to you. Let that be the voice that you're hearing through this time. And I actually believe, like a lot of other people, that we kind of need to live in two worlds. We have to have one foot in the world, not in an immoral or ungodly way, but in a way to understand our culture and to know what's going on around us so we can relate to people uh, and what they're experiencing. And so I I follow the news a little bit, um, and I think it helps keep me kind of current on things that are important. I've learned how to sift through things, but yeah, the Word of God is so critical for us at any time in life, but especially right now during this time when we're experiencing pandemic. So uh, let's look at Psalm 119, and uh, I'd, like to, uh, uh, I'd like to try to lead us to think about how do we develop and deepen our relationship with God and his awesome word. Uh, the word of God really reflects the person of God. Uh, when we read God's word, we get insight into who he is and how he wants to relate to us. There is a personal side to God's word uh, that is, uh, reflects the very core of who God is. God is personal. He's a person, a spiritual person, a spirit. And he wants to relate to our spirit. And so scripture is more than just academic study or words on a page. It's a window into us being able to see God and know God. Um, healthy churches, and I've had the chance to do some work and some research in this. Uh, healthy churches, have, there are certain indicators of what makes a church healthy. And it's interesting, today those indicators actually reflect back and are tied to the very things that made churches strong in the first century when Jesus launched the Christian movement and when he founded his church. Same indicators, and one of those indicators is that a church is strong in its convictions and in its practice of scripture in everyday life uh, that the church uh, enfolds into its programs and into its ministries. And uh, in the same way, strong Christians, Christians who are consistent and faithful in their faith and in their walk with Christ, they're strong because they prioritize the, uh, the place of the, the Bible in their lives. Uh, this uh, winter, Karen and I had a chance to visit our kids over in Wisconsin. We got two little grandkids there, and we got three in Florida. And we were with the, the Wisconsin grandkids, and I don't know how it came up. I think I had sent them, they're into birds, like they like to see the birds coming in at the bird feeder. I had sent them a, a page out of the Star and Tribune that had a little article about the birds that they're seeing at their bird feeder. And on the flip side of that page were a bunch of the little cartoons. And um, they opened the package, the envelope I sent them, and my uh, daughter sent me a, a picture. And they're holding up the cartoon side of the page. They missed totally the bird uh, thing that I wanted to send them. And they were all excited. They'd never seen that before, you know, cartoons uh, in a newspaper. So um, when we finally got together with them, uh, we started talking about cartoons, sharing cartoons that Karen and I used to watch when we were little, TV cartoons. And the one that came up uh, in our conversation was Popeye, Popeye the Sailor Man. So some of you are old enough like me to remember Popeye the Sailor Man. And the song, so I'm Popeye the Sailor Man, not I live in a garbage can, that was a different version. I'm <laughs> Popeye the Sailor Man, Popeye the Sailor Man. I'm strong to the finish, 
because I is eats my spinach. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. And they latched onto that. They loved that little cartoon, brought it up on a device, and um, we played it for a few days there, and it was just fun to see how they caught on to an old cartoon. But that's kind of the idea here in this psalm, uh, that, uh, like, Popeye had a relationship with spinach, right? And it made him strong, and he was committed to it. And Psalm 119 is a way for us to kind of see the, the vast um, array and kind of landscape of Scripture and how it can make us strong and make us healthy and lead us into a deeper relationship with God and uh, deepen um, our understanding of his word. And his word is awesome. One of the words that's used in Psalm 119 to describe uh, the psalmist's relationship to God's word because God is awesome. So many places in Scripture where it talks about God being awesome in majesty. Uh, in fact, I know a pastor who has removed that uh, term from his uh, vocabulary unless he's referring to God. Like, we'll say, oh, man, that's awesome, you know, right? Uh, or, what an awesome movie we saw. Or, what an awesome experience. And he's decided, you know, God is the one who really is the only one deserving of the term awesome. I'll, I'll say amazing. I'll say things are incredible. Um, I don't know if we need to go to that extreme, but God is awesome, and his word is awesome. And the psalmist declares, when he was reflecting on one of the hardest experiences in his life, in verse 161, my heart stands in awe of your words. My heart stands in awe of your words. And I hope that uh, that will be uh, the effect that we come away with today, that we'll be a little more in awe of who God is and uh, his word. So here are some ways that Psalm 119 helps us keep an ear for God's voice in his words to us through the Bible. First of all, <clears throat> really listen from the heart when you read scripture. Really listen from the heart. Um, most of us have had conversations with people and uh, we get the sense that when we're talking with them, they're not really listening. Have you ever had that experience? And we might even say, are you listening? Or did you hear me? And we see that in a human, uh, our human experience. And imagine what God must think when we're reading his word or not reading his word. And uh, he senses or he knows that we're not really listening. We're not listening from the heart deep inside. Um, one verse uh, that I think uh, indicates this is uh, Psalm 119 verse 11. I have hidden your word in my heart. So the psalmist took this God's word very seriously. I've hidden it, or I've stored it up in my heart that I might not sin against you. That was one of the first verses I memorized as a young Christian back in my high school days. And then the second verse, I have sought your face with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. So seeking God's face, face, uh, face with all of our heart. So from the heart and wholeheartedly. And um, there are times where uh, I've picked a passage of scripture and I've decided, you know, I just want to, again, like this, pat, like this um, chapter, I just want to fly through this section of scripture, but I'm going to keep a, a, an ear out for God's voice speaking to me. And I, there have been many times where I've done that, and there will be a verse that will just kind of pop for me. And that will be a passage that might get me through the day or it might... Land me on something that I want to pursue longer in the future. But however you might do it, let's uh, find a way to listen from the heart. This is reinforced by the fact that this psalm is an acrostic psalm. You know, we have the word acronym uh, that we use in marketing and in our, you know, everyday uh, life. And this is uh, an acrostic psalm, meaning that uh, there are 22 sections or par paragraphs that correspond with the 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, the consonants. And so from alpha or aleph, aleph to tau, each one of these sections of eight verses or eight lines, it may not be eight verses that start with a letter, but uh, the first letter in the first section under aleph, the first letter in the Hebrew al alphabet corresponding to our A, letter A, every uh, line in, the, in that first section of eight verses starts with the Hebrew letter A, Aleph. And then the same with the second section, Beth. Every letter, uh, every line starts with a B. And then Gimel, 
and so forth through the rest of the alphabet. And so there's this poetic design to this psalm that was intentional, <clears throat> that somehow the psalmist um, composed, led by the Spirit of God, inspired by God, but crafted this beautiful poem uh, in such a creative way and uh, in a way that just anticipates uh, for the reader what they're going to read next. And so uh, it's a motivation for the reader to read this piece of poetry, wisdom poetry, to meditate on Scripture, to memorize Scripture, to recall Scripture, and to recite Scripture. Uh, the, psalm, the Psalms, uh, to us, we read them, and we don't always catch kind of the original sort of Hebrew context that the first readers would have experienced, but that's what they would have been experienced. They would have read this, and it would have been just blown away by the beauty and the grandeur and the majesty of this psalm and the intricacy of it for each paragraph to start with the consecutive letters of that consonant. And it was meant to motivate them to, to meditate and to uh, memorize scripture and to reflect on it and to um, also recite it uh, in different contexts. And I think God wants us to do the same thing. I think that was the intent of this psalm. Uh, and we don't catch it as much as the original readers and author catch it, uh, caught it. But uh, for us to be able to make a commitment to take God's word and really listen to it from the heart. Um, and I think uh, as we read scripture, it would be important to, to read prayerfully uh, and to listen for God's voice to, read a, to lead us into a, a heartfelt understanding of God's word and by that, a, a real heartfelt and a wholehearted commitment to him. Uh, there's a book written by uh, Eugene Peterson. He was the author of uh, the paraphrased version of the Bible called The Message. Uh, many of you maybe have a copy of that or you like to compare your other translations with his paraphrase. Um, he was a Hebrew scholar and a pastor and um, ended up by, as an experiment kind of rewording scripture uh, faithfully to the original text but rewording it in a real modern sort of uh, paraphrased language. And he tells about that process in a book that he wrote called Eat This Book. And he's taking that title, Eat This Book, from the examples in scripture where uh, John, who wrote the book of Revelation, God told him to eat the scrolls that were in this vision that he had. Ezekiel, Jeremiah, God told those prophets to eat what God was giving them in terms of his word and his prophecies. And then we know Jesus um, said that he was the bread of life. So again, the idea that of ingesting into our spirit and into our hearts the revelation that God gives to us. I want to just read a couple of uh, comments by Peterson that I think fit uh, this um, uh, idea of listening from the heart. Um, he says, most of us carry around a handful of essential commands uh, that keep us on track. So like, love the Lord your God with all your heart, uh, love your neighbor, honor your father and mother. He lists a bunch of the Ten Commandments. Do not be anxious, uh, pray without ceasing, follow me, go and tell. We keep sort of a cache of uh, scriptures and commands that sort of get us through life. But he's saying that we should um, add to our repertoire uh, this idea of eating the book, eating God's word, ingesting it, taking it in, and letting it really impact our lives. He describes this a little bit more uh, in this little line. Words spoken and listened to, written and read, are intended to do something in us to give us health, wholeness, vitality, holiness, wisdom, and hope. And he's talking about the Bible. So he says, yes, eat this book. And then, real quick, uh, one final little comment that he makes that um, I think encourages us in this area. But he said, here's the thing. Every part of the revelation of Scripture, every aspect, every form is personal. God is relational to the core. And so whatever is said, whatever is revealed, whatever is received is also personal and relational. There's nothing impersonal, nothing merely functional. Everything from the beginning to the end and in between is personal. God is inherently and inclusively personal. 
And then he says, it involves me relationally as we read scripture. Pulls me into participation. It matters to the core of who I am, my identity. It affects who I am and what I do. And so this whole idea of the Christian life being a, one of following Christ obediently and being faithful, it really means understanding that scripture isn't just meant to be information in our heads, but it's meant to be transformational in our lives affecting what we do. I've read about prisoners of war. Uh, maybe you have too. I remember one book I read. Um, the prisoner eventually was released. He survived in Vietnam. And he said what sustained him, what got him through those difficult times was remembering the scriptures that he had memorized and meditated on. And those uh, were just like um, life-giving to him during his time. Um, I heard of a mountain climber one time who uh, <clears throat> developed pulmonary edema at a high altitude. And um, one of the other climbers went to find uh, an uh, oxygen tank that they had stashed at one of the base camps. And he came down to another base camp, and uh, one of the other um, climbers was with him. And uh, they could hear the blood in his lungs as he tried to breathe. And while they waited for that oxygen tank, he asked the other climber, I have a New Testament in the bottom of my backpack. Would you pull it out and just read it to me? And all that night in the tent, uh, he read to him scripture. And he ended up surviving, and this author, who wasn't a believer at the time, I uh, said, I don't know if it was uh, the scriptures or if it was God, whatever, whoever God is, or if it was the oxygen, but somehow something miraculous happened and this gentleman survived. So one of the things that we, we know um, uh, from scripture is that both in times when things are good and both in times when we're in experiencing, experiencing affliction or setback or loss, God's word uh, can be uh, life-giving to us if it's really listened to from the heart. Uh, the next, number two, watch out for selective hearing. Um, you've probably seen this or done this maybe, where we selectively hear or certain people selectively hear what they want to hear and avoid those things that they may not want to hear. And um, God's voices and tones and messages are so varied in Scripture. Uh, and he we should understand that God, again, as our Heavenly Father, as a person, speaks to us in certain tones and in certain ways, depending on the needs that we have. And so there are a number of different ways that you'll notice as you read through Psalm 119, that from verse to verse, there will be sometimes repetition, but um, sort of a scrolling through different synonyms that describe God's word and his words and uh, one of those is the word law, which is Torah. You've, maybe some of you have heard that word, which means God's instructions. Commands are his stipulations. Promises are the spoken word tied to God's promise and his promises to us, but ultimately tied to the promise that God made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that he would bless the entire world through them, through Abraham, starting with Abraham. And then finally, and it reflects the covenant salvation that God established with his people as a model nation to the world. And uh, this was all fulfilled in the person of Christ. And so the promises aren't just little snippet promises of God's blessing, but they represent the promise of God's salvation, his ultimate blessing in his relationship with us. Ways are God's uh, ways for us to live. Uh, words are the things that God has spoken, pretty obvious. Precepts, those are outlines of things that we should do. Uh, decrees are like the king's ordinances, what he decrees. And then statutes are God's established laws. And there are some other words that different translators of our English Bible uh, include um, based on how they interpret the Hebrew word. But these are some of the varied ways in which God speaks to us. Now, I don't know about you, some of you might be thinking, wow, this makes God seem kind of harsh and hard and cold and rigid, demanding, um, all these laws and commands and precepts and ordinances, but um, we need to remember who we are in human nature and how we need God's word to us, sometimes to admonish us, sometimes to correct us, but in many ways to guide us and to lead us into places where we experience him and his love, his comfort, his compassion, 
uh, God's word uh, has a way of uh, speaking to our soul and to our hearts and into our everyday life situations. Um, he's revealed himself to us for our own good because he cares about us and how uh, he wants us to enjoy our relationship with him. Uh, we recently got a new puppy, um, and uh, our other puppy we had to say goodbye to. He was very old, and we got a new little puppy. And uh, he was little when we got him, but, you know, now, you know, he's a big puppy, and he's sometimes out of control, and he uh, likes to, like, run through the house, look for an open door so he can make a, an escape through the neighborhood. Um, he's learned to obey some of our commands. Uh, yesterday, I was just sitting down for a few minutes, taking a rest, and he came over and started nosing me, and I knew right away he needed to go outside. So he's learned a few things. And um, Karen's teaching him some other funny little things like shake and bow down and those kinds of things. But anyway, you know, a, a dog needs and wants really to know what the boundaries are and what the commands are and what's expected. And just like children, parents and grandparents, we know that little kids, um, they can get out of control or they sometimes just don't know right from wrong or they don't know uh, maybe the risks or the dangers of something they're going to do. And so... They welcome that, really, for, from us, the security that it brings. And then if there is a disciplinary act, the comfort and the love and uh, the restoration that comes from that. And God's word is like that. All of these varied ways that God speaks to us in different tones and in different voices depending on our particular needs. So watch out for selective hearing. Um, I know for me, when I started reading this psalm this winter, I found uh, two psalms. One that kind of upbraided me and challenged me and kind of rebuked me. And so I've been reflecting on that psalm. I found another psalm in this, uh, another verse in this psalm where I was spoken to and I just sensed God's love and his comfort and his uh, provision and uh, the security of knowing that I could trust him. And so God will use um, various uh, passages from this psalm and from the rest of scripture to speak to the various needs that you have. So don't, uh, don't read selectively. Be open to whatever God may want to speak to you about. And then um, thirdly, listen for his life-giving voice. So a couple of things. You go through this Psalm, Psalm 119, you'll find lots of verses that talk about the blessing that comes from seeing how God wants to relate to us as he reveals himself through his word. So it's blessing and then fullness of life. Just the... Um, the, the fullness in our hearts, the fullness in terms of the way God uh, blesses our relationships with people, all of the things that just make life full in the best sense of that word. And so the psalmist says in verse 93, I'll never forget your precepts, for by them you have preserved my life. He got himself into some jams, not by his own uh, uh, intention, but people who were opposing him. And so there were times when uh, he was just uh, clinging to God through his word that God would sustain him and preserve him. Uh, other times we see in this, these psalms, this psalm, uh, verses that talk about God's protection, his comfort, his correction, his guidance. So all the ways that God blesses and makes our life full uh, through uh, understanding and listening to his life-giving voice. And then eternal life. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. And that doesn't mean just his lifespan, but into eternity. He understood that God's word is established in the heavens. And the other, there are other psalmists that talk about um, the, the way everlasting. And the word way is sometimes used as one of the descriptions of God's word in Psalm 119. The way everlasting. And then Psalm 16, you have made known to me the path of life, uh, joy in your presence and eternal pleasures forevermore. So the Hebrew Old Testament writers, they had a clear sense of heaven and everlasting life. And if we listen for God's life-giving voice, that would be our experience, that would be our walk, that would be our daily uh, experience. And so um, this idea of uh, looking for God to give us life, not take anything away from us as we uh, read his word, but Asking him to just fill our hearts with uh, his life-giving spirit. Um, J.I. Packer is one of my favorite writers, and he um, 
has said uh, that the travelers through the Bible landscape misses his or her way as, they, as soon as they lose sight of the hill called Calvary. And so as we read scripture, the hill called Calvary, obviously, is where Jesus uh, died for our sins. He gave his life for us. He sacrificed in our place his life and uh, took away our sins and then rose again to give us his life, give us new life. And as we read through scripture, uh, it's interesting that Jesus said on one occasion, I came to give you life and give it to the full. And I came to give you eternal life. He repeats that many, many times. And so for us to read through any part of the Old Testament, especially this psalm, and to miss sight of the hill called Calvary is, will shortcut us from experiencing the uh, beautiful life that God wants to impart to us and for us to receive from him uh, on a daily basis. And then last, and number four, listen to God with a humble dependence. Uh, the psalmist says in verse five, oh, that my ways would be steadfast in keeping your statutes. So from the outset, from the, um, out of the chute, in the first little section of the psalms, and then ramping up and building through the entire uh, book of Psalm 119, uh, the psalmist, whoever the author was, is um, working hard at establishing from opening and then through this buildup, ambition, dedication, commitment to be faithful to God's word. And then the last verse, this struck me one time when I first was reading Psalm 119, the last verse, isn't this interesting? I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. So after all of his ambition and aspiration, dedication, commitment, probably lots of really good follow-through, he um, acknowledges to God, you know, God, I've, I've obeyed you, actually, in lots of ways. He comes to the end of the psalm, and he caps it off with this humble dependence upon God and a, very, a self-awareness of his own frailties and his own tendencies. And you and I may uh, get discouraged as we fail in our walk with Christ from time to time, or we don't feel we're faithful enough, or we are up against some really hard area of obedience, and we may be tempted to just sort of throw in the towel and kind of give up, or ratchet back our expectations about our faith in Christ. And I think this last verse of the psalm tells us to just be humble and be dependent, be self-aware, confess your sins, your failings. God is a compassionate God who receives us back and gives us grace. He also will give us the will to obey him if we bow our knee before him. Obedience can be hard, and uh, we go through all different kinds of experiences in life that uh, test our faith and where God's word is really important and necessary, but we may uh, flare away from it because of our uh, discouragement in some area of our walk with Christ. But the psalmist would say, yeah, I go astray. There's lots of times where I just lose it. I'm lost. And God, please seek your servant. Uh, I don't forget your commands. I know what you want me to be and where you want me to be going. So uh, prayerful listening to God, obedience that God calls us to in a humble dependence upon him. Well, I got a few last uh, next step takeaways maybe that you might want to consider uh, real quick. Number one, um, maybe it's time uh, in your life, like it was for me this winter, to revisit or take on an unfamiliar or neglected book of the Bible to read and to study. It might be just, you know, scanning, cursory reading, listening for God's voice. Maybe it would be an in-depth study so uh, is that maybe something that um, would have a place in your life these days? Um, it's really important. The psalmist in Psalm 119 talks about this a lot. He talks about other believers, kind of the company, the family of believers who were like him, desiring to know God through his word and were committed to his word. Pair up with others to read and reflect on the Bible with a view to application and follow through. And then last Find a good book that helps you in better understanding and knowing how to read the Bible for all it's worth. And by the way, there's a good book called How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth, if you want to read a book about it. So, well, um, let's pray. 
Father, thank you for uh, your word again, and thank you for the ways in which you have revealed yourself to us in history and have led men and women to record scripture that we now have in our hands. Um, but Lord, the ways in which even daily, momentarily, you can speak to us, you can bring your word back to our memory, you can uh, lead us to recall something, you uh, open our eyes and we see something wonderful in your word. Uh, so Lord, we give you thanks and praise for all that. Thank you for being our God who loves us and cares about us and who uh, guides us in the days ahead. And we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. We serve an amazing God. Please feel free to stand to join us as we sing our closing songs.
Psalm 119, verse 105. It says that your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. As Christians, historically, we've been known as people of the book because the book, Scripture, reveals to us who God is. As it says in 2 Corinthians, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus. All of Scripture is reflecting towards Christ Jesus and the light that he gives for our path, for our way back to God. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for joining us online, in person. You're dismissed.